There we go. Do take care because this is now very hot. Oh, it smells really green and lovely. Mm. That's actually quite pleasant. I think the honey mm. would sweeten it and mm. make it more so. Yes. But that's actually really pleasant as it is. Yes, that's fine. I mean, the honey is a cottage to your palate, mm. so if it works for you like that, all well and good. Honey is better than most other sweeteners, yeah, I would say, because again, you've got that natural. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and there's also, there's a psychological side to this as well. You're feeling you're taking something also that you know inside yeah. that's very healing for yeah. you as well. So, you know, that combination can also help to make it effective, particularly if you don't like something that's a bit sharp or bitter. Okay, thank you. Now, actually, once you get more familiar with your herbs and uh, when you start learning to how to identify herbs that are in the hedgerow, herbs yeah. that are in your garden, yeah. there are lots of other mixtures that you can make. And the more familiar you become, the more in tune you become with how things can work yeah. in combination. But to begin with, I think it's, uh, it's a lovely idea, just for example, if you want to pick me up, just to go into the garden and gather some mint. Yeah. Most people have yeah. mint in their gardens. Lots of people find that mint grows too much in their garden. They think, I've got, you know, because it's quite an invasive plant. It goes plant. everywhere, doesn't it? But actually, if you start to use it, dry it, and make a mint peppermint tea from it, which you can buy in ready-made infusions, but it's so lovely just to go out and gather your own because it's extremely fresh, that makes a wonderful pick-me-up. And if mm -hmm. you could put um, two good teaspoons of mint leaves um, and pour boiling water, it, and again, you can sweeten with honey. Oh, it's a good wish. digestive as well, isn't it's it? It's a mate? very good digestive. It's a very good cleanser as it's well. Good and good for your hair. It's good yeah. for all kinds so, of things. Yeah. So it, and it's a lovely pick-me-up. It's a, Because it has a lovely fresh, there's a freshness to it. You've only got to inhale and breathe in the smell of mint. Mm. I mean, you talk lovely. about um, that you can buy a lot of these in tea bags from the supermarket, yeah. but half the fun, isn't it, is oh, actually yes. picking them yourself, yes. learning about them, yes. and seeing how they work for you. And, and it might be that you think of different ways to use them and in different blends and in different formulas mm, exactly. that work for you. That's yes. the beauty of it. It's, it's lovely because you might want to pick me up um, on a cold day. Yeah. So you could, for example, uh, have some dried mint, but you could also use some hawthorn leaves. Yeah. Because... Hawthorn is well known as uh, particularly good for heart, heart medicine. Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of um, manufactured medicine have their base in in you know the, the content or the, the, the properties of hawthorn leaves, mm -hmm. hawthorn berries. So you can again, it's exactly the same procedure. You take a, a couple of teaspoons, put them in your pot or into your into your tea net, and just boiling water and infuse for five minutes. And I think when you're learning as well, there are so many good books out there with recipes that you can follow as well. Yes. And I think that's a really important place to start, isn't it? By yes. buying yes. some really well-informed books yes. so that yeah. you've got a basis to start from. Yes. yes. One of the ones that makes, which I get very excited about, and it's not just about using this particular herb for infusions or anything, you can use, actually use it as a vegetable as well, uh, is the nettle. Yes. And I think if you pick nettle leaves, and, and there's lots of, there are lots of ways of approaching a nettle. It's actually a really good idea to approach the nettle as the spirit of the nettle so that yeah. it knows what you're up to and you're much less likely to be stung. But if you snip the top, ask the nettle first. It's appropriate to ask all herbs yeah. or plants, if you're going to take away part of them, that you approach them and you say, I would like to take some of this for, for healing yeah. so that it understands. And also give thanks. And never take everything. No, don't, don't deplete the whole stock. Yeah. Yeah. Take the tips of the nettle and again, make a little infusion, put your boiling water, and nettle tea is so cleansing, detoxing. We all need to detox yeah. from time to time. So I would recommend a nettle tea at least twice a week, mm. particularly in the winter months when we're eating lots of carbohydrates and you know a lot of them sort of settle around us, as it were. Nettle helps to yeah. cleanse that. So nettle, again, makes a very, very good. But it's also, you know, because of the cleansing, because of getting rid of you know, any toxic... Mm -hmm elements that are in the, in the bloodstream. The nettle is taking all those out of the way for you. Great. So nettle is another one that's just easy. You don't even have to look up to see what that looks like. It, they're out there. They're out there. In, so in we've, the, looked, we've looked at the teas, mm. and now we're going to have a look at a tincture. We can look at a tincture next, yes. Okay. Yep, that's fine. So you're going to show us next how to make a tincture. Can you tell me what a tincture actually is? Yes. Um, a tincture is... Uh, kind of a medicine, I suppose. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, made, f again, from herbs. It's an infusion, yeah. but not in the same way as a tea is okay. an infusion. It's an, a long-term infusion. 
and what we need is something that will extract the properties yeah. of the herb or the, or the berry we're using, um, which can take some time because obviously we're using dried berries um, or dried herbs and it takes quite a time to extract all the goodness from them that we need for the medication. Would it be easier to use fresh herbs if you've got them? Is it better or is it better to dry them first? I feel it's preferable to dry them. Okay. Uh, the reason being, there's a lot of water content in fresh yeah. herbs yeah. and that can create mould. So it, what it does, it affects the keeping time. Yeah. If you use, there are a number of alternatives in terms of the liquid that you use to create the tincture. But if you're using fresh herbs, the water will, content will dilute okay. whatever else you're using. So I always think that... Make sure they're dried, dried thoroughly first. They're dried thoroughly, okay. yes. yes. Um, so that's, that's quite important. And you can dry herbs, um, or if you have an old oven such as I have here, you can dry it in the, you know, the warming part at the bottom, which isn't the active oven. Or, or just hang them. Or hang it? them. Yeah. You can hang them or you can dry them in, a, in an airing cupboard. Yeah. Yeah. A warm, warm place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you dry them until you, you, can, see, you can see because they, yeah. they begin to shrivel up or they begin to be almost papery if they're a herb. Uh, and if it's a berry, for example, these are hawthorn berries. You can see that they're quite, they're quite hard. They bounce. They? Yeah. <laughs> um, so and yes, and and they shrivel up. So, you know then that they are appropriate and suitable. So a tincture is a form of a medicine. It's a form of a medicine, and what we normally would say, I mean, sometimes you can use them as preventatives. Uh, what I recommend, for example, um, some that I have made already for this year. Uh, these are elderberry tinctures, and I would say we take thirty drops of this three times a day Four. throughout the winter and this because of the high vitamin c content okay, yeah that helps to keep away colds and flus and things yeah, yeah. um now can you i can, have a smell you can indeed yes oh you can definitely smell mm. they're gorgeous would you like to try it yes please just on just it's usually a good idea to have a bottle which has got a dropper in how many drops about that Try that. See how you feel. Taste it. Oh, it's strong, <laughs> but really nice. Yeah. Yes. So this is for its vitamin C content. So you take that as a vitamin C supplement. As a vitamin C supplement. So what, what is the um, tincture you're going to be making today? I'm going to make hawthorn berry tincture today, which is very, very good for the winter for circulatory. Oh, I get bad circulation. Cold yes. hands, cold, cold feet, hands, that cold kind feet. of thing. Yes. yes. Cold hands, cold feet, cold nose. <laughs> yeah. And um, so what, what we're going to do that, we're going to make a small tincture with that, but as a, it'll be a good example as to how you can make. Okay. There are a couple of other things, alternative things as well, because obviously, as you said, that was quite strong. Yeah. That, that's because that one is made with vodka. I can taste that. <laughs> yes. Now, if you're going to make a tincture with vodka, the advantages with vodka are that it keeps much longer. Yeah. You can have a shelf life of probably up to two years, uh -huh. certainly 12 months. Uh, if you, you know, two years is quite safe, even longer possibly. It's important to use... Now, when you see recipes for tinctures, they often talk about 100% yes. thing. That was a great confusion to me so I actually went to find out about this and it is quite suitable it doesn't have to be 100% alcohol just when a high level them, alcohol high level yeah. 40% if you yeah. can get it yeah a lot of them are not a lot of them are about 37 but, but that's, that's okay right. but the vodka had the advantage of that as I said is the longevity of yeah. it yeah however if you might want your tinctures for your children or you might be particularly something like vitamin c for children yes. is, is in this time this time of year is really important Exactly. But you don't want to give it to them in vodka. You don't want to give them vodka. And you actually might not be a drinker yourself. Yeah. You know, you might have... So the, there are some very pleasant alternatives. One of which is vegetable glycerin. Okay. And this is... You can get this at health food shops. Mm -hmm. But uh, failing that, you can also get it... You can probably get it online. Okay. Um, and it's interesting. It's very... Would you like to taste this? Okay. <laughs> a little taste. Something called vegetable glycerin doesn't taste doesn't sound like it's going to taste terribly good though. Oh, it's very slow pouring. Oh, just all of it like that. Yes, that's fine. That's incredibly sweet. Yes. yes. I'm not sure I like that. I think I prefer because the you're vodka. Not, yeah. <laughs> oh, but it's not horrible. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> The matter of opinion on that one. I think my daughter might like it. Your it's daughter very might sweet. Like it, yes. Yeah, but that was oh, yeah, far too sweet for you. Mm. But not a horrible taste, nevertheless, because you might imagine that a vegetable-based yeah. thing 
uh, might, might have a bit in us again, yeah. you know, like I'll yeah. And the other alternative then is maple syrup. I think I'd prefer the maple syrup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can have the opportunity to taste this if you like. No, thank you. You're familiar with that. <laughs> okay, so those are the alternatives if you mm. don't drink or you prefer to have, you know, non-alcoholic yeah. um, content. So, making a tincture is extremely simple. Good. But it can be time-consuming, and that's the part, part of the fun of it. So all you need to do is you put your, these are my hawthorn berries. This is a very small jar, obviously, because we're just going to make a yeah. little. Right? Now, you may choose which you want to make this with. Would you like to make this with the vodka? Definitely with the vodka, right. I think. Right, okay. So what you need to do is you put your berries into, the jar, into a jar, cover them with whichever of the um, vehicles you're going to use, whichever of the meat you're going to use. Mm -hmm. Label it. This is extremely important. Label it with the date. I was going to say put the date on it, yeah. Yes. Because what you have to do next, every day, you have to shake, shake it. it. Mm. So you put, keep it in a dark place, or a, you know, not in bright light. And every day you give it a good shake for three months. Okay. At the end of three months, you then, again, you can use the little straining net or muslin or something like that. What will happen, you'll find, is that the vodka obviously will change colour. Yes, it will take the colour of the berries. It will take the colour of the yeah. berries. You strain it through and then you bottle it, preferably in either brown or blue glass Something bottles. dark. Keep the Something dark. Yeah. And then store it in a cool place and then you take your, you know, your drops. So but this is something that you make well in advance because yes. you have to keep it for the three months to get the properties yes. from, from the, the, the Absolutely. ingredients but, that you're using. Yes. Yeah. But the, the wheel of the year works in that way. Yes, it does. You're gathering in September. Yeah. You know, September. And it's it, seeing you through the winter you through, yes. until you can start gathering perhaps the spring bits and pieces yes. that you might want, like elderflowers perhaps, Elderfl and yes. that you might want to use for the next, for the next bit. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's kind of about building up stock. Yeah. Which is rather nice, but it's because it is really lovely. You see, this is already taking on a bit of colour. It is, um, you know. So you gather in September, October, shake them till spend, November. Yeah, spend your time drying, yes. shake them all, and you've got them for that winter. You've got them for that winter. Brilliant. So you're starting to sort of <clears throat> take your preventative medicine from November on. Yeah. So. Excellent. So that's the tincture, but it is important to label it and to write it in your diary or on your calendar. Yeah. And sometimes, because sometimes you might go into your pantry or your cupboard and you think. What's that? My daily yeah. shiggle, as yeah. it were. Um, yes. Brilliant. Yes. Thank Thank you. Thank you. So you're going to make a salve next, um, which is like a cream, isn't it? That's right. So yes. what, what kind of salve are you going to show us how to make? Well, this is a general purpose salve mm -hmm. for stings, grazes, um, slight bruising, perhaps, yeah. Yeah. Uh, scratches, that sort of thing. So something to soothe the something skin. Something to soothe, yeah. yes. Ideal something for children, I'm guessing. Ideal well, for children, so. yes. Yeah. Ideal for children. Uh, there's nothing harmful in it, it's going to be very gentle, it's also going to be quite fragrant. Okay. So it's a gentle salve we're going to make. I'm going to um, tell you what I'm going to use as the basis for the salve to begin with, and then we'll talk about the ingredients as well. Uh, for salve making, we need a number of, me we, we have options for a number of different mediums for the, the actual oiliness of it. We can use normal olive oil, yeah. such as anyone might have in their kitchen cabinet. Or we can use an almond oil, for example. Yeah, it's a good um, base a good oil, isn't base it? Yeah. oil, yes. And any good base oil, actually. Coconut oil, yeah. almond oil, olive oil, vegetable oil, yeah. even. Um, so th those we would use as the medium for the, the main part of, of the salve. What I did earlier, just to prepare, was I started to make a lavender oil. Yes. For this oil, I've just put... Lavender leaves, dried lavender, yeah, which is wonderful, and I've covered it with sweet almond oil. Now, if you prepare your um, infused oil this way, you put the cold oil on the herb, mm -hmm. and you have to shake it every day for quite a few days so yeah. that the essence of the herb starts to be collected in the oil, and then you have to strain it. Yeah. In order to speed up the process of that, of course, the other alternative is to warm the oil. Yeah and simmer the herb in the oil for five to ten minutes. And that will just pull the infusion into, into the oil itself, into the oil it? itself. Yeah. Yes. Now, um, we'll come to the ingredients in a moment. One of the things I want to mention, though, is if you're going to gather your ingredients, you can obviously you can buy ready-prepared, but if you're going to gather from the hedgerows, 
I always feel it's a good idea to use a paper bag. It's not essential, but a paper bag has a number of, number of um, quite valuable elements to it. You might go out and gather your herbs today mm -hmm. and want to dry them. They can be dried in here. Because, because I guess the, the paper bag will absorb the moisture from the actual paper bag, yeah. Paper bag will absorb moisture. It will um, be dark yeah. because it's, you know, it's a, a brown paper bag is particularly good. Uh, so you've got your herb already, gather yeah. in a dark bag. Yeah. Just pop it in the airing cupboard. And leave you it. haven't got to it. If you what you'll find is if you gather your herbs in a plastic They'll bag, they'll sweat, won't they? They will sweat. Yeah. And you, what you'll need to do if you gather them in a plastic bag is take them out of the plastic bag as soon as you get home and maybe dry them on newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know, or something, or kitchen kitchen towel possibly. Okay. But the bag seems to serve a number of purposes, so I think that's a good idea. The essential ingredient beyond these things, which is common to all um, uh, salves really, is something that will help to solidify it. Now I use beeswax. Mm -hmm. There are alternatives to beeswax. I like beeswax simply because um, it's. I, I usually get organic beeswax. I like to purchase it in small granules so that it's easy to melt down. So yeah. these are little granules of beeswax. And you can actually, with beeswax, you need to test how long and how much you need. Because yeah. obviously you don't want the ointment to be so difficult you can't even put your finger because in it. Because it dries quite hard, doesn't yes. it? Yeah. So the ability to sort of, you know, gauge how much you've got is, is very good with, with, um, with beeswax. Um, or any flaked, I suppose, any flaked sort of solidifier. But that's what I would normally use. Um, so, uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to make a small uh, preparation here, a uh, small mixture of each of the herbs that we're going to use for this salve, and we will then do the fast method uh, by melting, heating the vegetable oil, infusing the herbs in that, straining it, yeah. and then mixing it with the okay. beeswax. Yeah. Okay, we're going to put a couple of teaspoons of tansy, which is a very good herb, for mixing with the other herbs in particular and a very soothing herb. A couple of teaspoons of lavender flowers. And to that we're going to add a couple of pinches of marigold flowers. And marigold's quite traditionally soothing for the skin, isn't it? That's yes, one of the ones I know of. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Okay, now we have our herbs combined in, yeah. in, in the glass. What we're going to do next, we're going to heat up our vegetable oil, mm -hmm. which is our sweet almond oil. Yeah. We are going to melt our beeswax. Yeah. After the vegetable oil has been infusing for about five minutes, we'll strain it through, and then we'll begin the really beautiful alchemical process of mixing some beeswax along with our oil yeah. so that we can get a really creamy consistency. Lovely. And um, then we'll have a proper, useful okay. oil and cream for our herbal cabinet. Lovely. Right, to begin with we're going to put our herbal mixture into the infused or into the oil which is warming uh, in readiness. So we just tip that in and stir it thoroughly so that all the all the constituent parts are soaked in the oil. So that we need to keep here for about five minutes. The next part of the process is to strain our infused oil through a muslin uh, cloth. I'm using my little net again. As you can see, it's been well used, but is regularly washed in the washing machine. So I'm going to strain my oil into this glass so that you can see what I'm doing. And then we'll get ready to add the beeswax so that we can make our salve. This oil will be well infused by now. And so, in this pot, I have melted some of my beeswax granules. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a little bit at a time, and then I'm going to test it as we go, so that we make sure we have the right consistency. It's important to be careful with the beeswax because it sets very quickly. And you don't want this to be a salve which is not spreadable on your skin when you come to 
when you come to use it. And it does set quite quickly, so you need to monitor this as you do it quite carefully. As you can see, the beeswax is as soon as the beeswax comes off the heat, it begins to set. Okay, so now we're going to try it. I'm going to test it on a little plate, which is just what you would do if you were making jam, because the plate will be cold, so the beeswax will settle and chill once it comes onto the cold plate. So then we'll know if we've got enough. Okay, there's still a little warmth in this, so it's not quite set yet. Once this is actually cool, it will be, I feel, quite creamy enough to use. And if you just test it then gently, because there's no, no longer great heat in it, you can just see it's absorbing nicely into your skin and it's soft enough, so you're not causing because you're putting this on a bit of skin which has been hurt, so you don't want it to be dragged or drawn. So you want this to be a really gentle and creamy salve. So that feels to me as if that's sufficient. And I think it's about you testing it as you make it. Right, Jackie, we're okay. almost ready to yeah. treat the walking wounded. <laughs> so we're going to um, put some of our, our mix into, the, into a jar and what I think is rather nice to do is to add a few drops of essential oil, yeah. which will give it a nice fragrance. Yeah. And which oil is that you're putting in I'm there? I'm using chamomile. And that's really good for the here, skin as well, isn't it? Which is also very good And I'm good assuming you can also put lavender because you've used lavender. You can so put lavender. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to do, you don't have to, but it is quite nice. You've yeah. got something fragrant yeah. as well to and add. And then the essential oils themselves help to work on the skin as well. So, I mean, that's it all right. helps, doesn't yes. it? Yes. And just a few drops is more than enough. Yeah because the essential oils are actually very potent. Yes, they are. So as we speak, this is beginning to set. And of course, once it cools down completely, it will be set, as you can actually see. It's, it's setting, setting there now. Very yeah. nicely. Can I try some? You can, indeed. It smells lovely. That's really soft already on it's the skin. It's very soft, that. yes. It's really lovely. And it smells good. Mm. And it will ease whatever ailment you have there. And of course, there are lots, lots of different kind of recipes for oils and um, salves Absolutely. and that kind of thing. Yes. So that's, that's, that's yes. a basic way of making a simple salve, yes. isn't it? Yes, and there are many other herbs. Plantain, for example, if you've got a really nasty mm. cut or something, is very, very good. Lots of ex excellent herbs yeah. can be used. Um, but if you, you know, for example, the other day, I, rather, I was rather preoccupied and rather foolishly put my hand onto the cooker yeah. after I had switched it off but the heat was still there and I was very quick under the tap cold mm. water but it still blisters doesn't it yes you have to get under the tap because what happens is your skin continues to cook mm. under the tap lo long for quite a while cold water just to chill it down and then the salve on top the salve on yeah. top and it really I didn't have a blister thank you brilliant so the list is endless the most important thing is to have fun with them and to enjoy what you're doing and not to be scared to experiment. This film has been a small attempt at introducing the beginner to the fascinating world of herbs and magic. It can only ever be an introduction to the subject of herbalism, both magical and medicinal. This subject is vast and it can take many years to master. What this film has aimed to show is that anyone with an interest can learn the parts that are pertinent to them, be it magical or otherwise. I am by no means an expert on this subject. I just know what I know from a little study, a few good books, friends who know more than I, and a lot of experimentation over the years. When you study herbs, you start to look at the world in a different light. New plants become fascinating, new uses are discovered, your garden takes on a new meaning, and the world around you becomes a richer and more abundant place with new possibilities. It is important, however, to always remember that if in doubt, seek the advice of someone better qualified than yourself. Particularly on the medicinal side of herbalism, it can be fatal to ingest the wrong herbs. But if you are sensible and cautious and follow the basic rules, your journey should be a wonderful one of discovery, both magical and practical.